is palpable. It's a sentiment echoed by freshman congressmen like Republican Scott Rigel. It's a dysfunctional place. It is truly broken. And I am confident, though, that with the right leadership and headed in the right direction, you know, we'll get this sorted out. Well, the answer to sorting it all out may lie in this new ritual on Capitol Hill, a bipartisan breakfast meeting led by two freshman lawmakers who are determined to break through the partisan gridlock. They join me now, Congressman Jim Renacci, Republican from Ohio, and Congressman John Carney, Democrat from Delaware. Welcome to both of you. Uh, Congressman Renacci, let me start with you. This issue of, of grid, I, I hear this personal frustration from members of Congress a lot, but I don't see the collective frustration making its way to the leadership. Why not? Well, I, I think in a way it does. I know that uh, as far as in our Republican caucus, it's brought up a lot. But, uh, you know, leadership listens, and they realize that there is some frustration. One thing I think we have to realize here in Washington that, that I'm starting to realize that things move very slow. You know, I came from the business world where a decision would be made today. So, so to Ridgell, Congressman Ridgell said the same thing. He didn't, he came, same thing, and he was... He knew it was bad. He didn't know how bad. Is that how you feel about it? Right. I said that. I said it's one of the three issues I think are very difficult down there, how bad the partisanship gridlock is. Uh, Congressman Carney, yesterday the president came out uh, and put his shoulder behind a new Democrat plan to uh, what they say is to pay for this payroll tax holiday. Uh, the criticism I heard from Senate Republicans in particular was, you know, okay, you're doing this, but... Uh, why not do this a little more quietly? Why gin up the partisanship? Do you think the president overplayed his hand at all yesterday? Well, I don't know that he overplayed his hand, but I think the key thing is to extend the payroll tax. And uh, the important part there is to uh, find a way to pay for it. And, you know, Jim and I were talking about as we were coming over here this morning, uh, just let's get the ideas on the table. Let's work together. Let's just find some solutions as opposed to kind of making it a big political issue. There are differences. Don't right. get me wrong. But uh, we ought to be able to get that done. We ought to be able to extend the payroll tax so we don't have a tax increase on on taxpayers uh, at the end of the year. And, and we ought to find a way to pay for it. Where's the movement? On your side, Congressman Renacci, where, where is the movement? Is the movement on maybe a tax loophole that gets closed? Well, I think the, the movement and all is just coming up with a solution that, that it's paid for. And uh, because I think there are a lot of people that believe we, uh, we need to extend it. The question is, how do we pay for it moving forward? But is, there, is, is taxes completely off the table, or would you be open on a closing maybe one tax loophole, two tax loopholes to do it? Well, there are a number of suggestions coming out, um, and I'm not sure if there's loopholes involved. I mean, there's, there's, there's a number of pieces that, that have been discussed, and I think those are all going to be brought up over the next couple of days. You comfortable with the idea, with the Republican idea that out there has to do with continuing the pay freeze, federal workers? Well, I don't know that that we ought to, you know, link those. Again, I think we ought to sit down. There are lots of different ideas about how to pay for it. I mean, we heard some this morning. We had uh, Doug Elmendorf in to, from CBO talking to our bipartisan group, and we learned some things about some of the things that are in the baseline budget that maybe ought, ought not be there. So, I think there are lots of ways that we can skin that cat. Big question to both of you. Big picture question in this case. And to you, is there a piece of rhetoric you used in your campaign that you really believed, and now you're sitting there going, boy, I just was wrong? Well, I think we, I came down here expecting that uh, we needed to make a difference, and I still believe we need to make a difference. The problem is, I think sometimes you think it's easier to get down there. And I think a lot of times American people believe, you know, they're frustrated with Congress. But keep in mind, there's 435 people in a room. I always use the example, when you bring your family together, 10 or 12 people, try and get something agreed upon with 10 or 12, throw 435 people in a room. And I think that's, but that's the way the government How does that is. play at your town halls? Well, I think they understand. I think yeah. there's, it, again, it's communication. We have to understand. It's not one guy coming down here is going to make a difference. It's one guy coming down here with 434 other people trying to make a difference. Same question to you. Is there something you used on the campaign trail? I say, you know what? That was, it was political rhetoric, I believe, but it was wrong. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things that I talked about all the time was bringing what we call the Delaware Way to Washington. And the Delaware Way is, you know, we have a, a tradition after the election called Return Day, where we all go to the Southern right. County, Georgetown, yeah. and we literally bury the hatchet. And the expectation is after that, that the campaign is over and mm -hmm. we're gonna work, you know, work together to, to solve the problems that we face. And that's what I've tried to do. I, I thought it, it was something that could work here, and that's why we've, we've developed this bipartisan uh, breakfast club to well, try we'll to do We'll see. It does we'll seem see. like the public really wants this. Absolutely. The question is how you pull it off. Congressman AC. Congressman Carney, thank you both for coming on and coming on set. I appreciate thank it. Thank you.
Well, the Tuesday political...